and she's tore her up from the floor up and we're gonna fix her up. What's up everybody? I'm Ryan and you're watching another episode of Trails and Racing. We're doing something here a little bit different today. Um, I'm going to be showing you how to polish your crankshaft at home. And I don't want you guys getting all those twisted minds out there. We're talking about engine parts only, all right? So basically what we got going on over here is a 400 cubic inch small block Chevy. I'm going to be doing a video about this um, in a little bit. It's going to be titled something like building a redneck race motor. Um, this is actually not going to be going in a race car. It's going to be going in a street car but we're going to hop it up pretty good and i'm going to show you all the you know tricks and uh stuff you can do to these things and make them go fast and uh be okay for racing so what we got going on over here is a pretty bad crankshaft this thing does not look too good it's pretty scored up it looks like they never did oil changes on their car or uh maybe they weren't running any oil in the car at all but basically what we have here is some really scored up journals you can hear it with the fingernail uh pretty much all the mains are really bad this one i think is the worst um the rod journals aren't as bad but they still are a little bit chunky um so basically what we're going to be doing here is polishing this thing up and all we're going to be doing really is taking these high edges off the uh the journals where the uh where the scores are there's some high edges we're going to be just flatten those down and it's going to be smoother um and it's going to be better for the life of your bearings overall there's about probably a couple hundred thousand rednecks across this country, me included, that would look at this and be like, oh man, just put some bearings in it, it'll be fine. And it probably would be, um, as long as you got some good oil in the car um, and you got a good oiling system and you have the right clearances and whatnot, this probably would last running this thing like that. Um, but is it gonna be the best for your main bearings? Probably not. So basically what you can do is you can take a crankshaft down to the machine shop and they normally charge between 50 to 100 bucks to polish it themselves. And they have the good tooling over there and stuff. And I just got a crankshaft down here polished up. This is gonna be going in the race car. Um, but this thing is smooth as butter, man. They do a real good job there. Um, it's gonna be going this motor, that's gonna be going in this race car for next season. Um, but, you know, if you guys aren't gonna be racing the motor, it's not gonna be seeing 7,500 RPMs every night and stuff. Um, this will work out pretty good. And I think you guys will being pretty uh, impressed with the results you're gonna get. But, um, you know, this doesn't really factor in out of roundness um, and taper on the journals. So you really should have this stuff checked out, you know, make sure that you got a good running crankshaft to begin with. Uh, this came out of a good running motor. So if you guys had a good running motor to begin with, then you know that, you know, it's gonna run better after you polish it up than it did before. And uh, you'd probably be okay just, you know, going around the street or something or put it in your pickup truck, your mud truck, or whatever you're gonna be doing. Now, the first thing you do in any redneck video is you gotta grab yourself a beer. Preferably a bush. All right, now the intro's over, let's get to work. So the first step here is uh, using some fine grit sandpaper. I'm using 600 grit. And this is the first step. You're gonna go and uh, add some finer uh, sandpaper along the way, depending on what kind of finish you want. So take your sandpaper, find how wide your journal is here and cut it. And I just kind of creased it down the middle and cut it with an X-Acto knife. Got it pretty close. So you're gonna wanna oil up the, uh, the journal is pretty good with some WD-40. This is technically gonna be wet sanding with some oil but you want to make sure you get it real good in there. But you're going to have to go ahead and wrap this guy around one time. And then you're going to take some tape. I'm using electrical tape just because it's what I have. I'm going to wrap it around. And then you don't have to worry about it coming undone because what you're going to do is we're going to take a shoelace and wrap it around a couple times. And it's going to cover the whole entire area and get an even uh, load on the entire journal here. So you're not going to be just doing one side or, you know, one corner. You're going to get the whole thing. Okay, so you got your uh, sandpaper in there. You got the tape on there, you got it all looped up with WD-40. Then you're gonna position these, uh, I'm using a shoelace here, but you're gonna position the string 
So it's got the whole entire surface area of sandpaper. And this front one is gonna be a little more difficult because we don't have a way to prevent it from walking forward. So you really gotta kind of pull this way to keep it tight. Uh, these ones obviously are gonna be a lot easier, but uh, let me show you how to do the front one. Now, it'd be a lot smarter to have this thing uh, clamp down at the table with a seat clamp of some sort, but you just gotta kind of make sure you're not gonna have it fall off the table here. But you just wanna go back and forth. So the first general is just about done. I actually had to use some 220 grit to start with because that 600 grit just wasn't making any progress up. But basically what I got is I still got that low groove right in the middle, but it's a whole lot smoother and there's a whole lot less catching with my fingernail. So I'm gonna come back to this with some polish, I think. And I'm gonna show you how I do the center ones, which are a whole lot easier. You can really get your back into these things. Now this is the 220 grit starting out with first. This was the worst journal by far, so I'm gonna really use some, uh, some muscle on this guy. Oh yeah, we're taking some material off this guy. Uh, that's looking pretty good. Time for some 600 grit. A whole lot easier with two hands. Oh yeah, now we're getting somewhere. Wow. There's hardly any grooves left. There still is a couple big ones in the middle, but I don't feel my fingernail anymore. So I think this guy's ready for some polish. So what I'm about to do here, so I'm gonna use some polish here, some turtle wax, and I'm just gonna take a little bit of uh, microfiber cloth here. I'm gonna put the polish all over it and then do the same kind of deal here with this little piece that I cut off. Okay here's what it looks like after the polish is done. I'm really hoping that this camera is able to capture what it looks like because it looks pretty dang good compared to what it used to look like with all those big old grooves in it and stuff. Um, compared to that one right there that hasn't even been touched yet. This looks night and day different. Um, yeah, I pretty much got nothing to grip onto now with my fingernail. Um, like the other one, there still is a little bit of uh, grooves in the middle here, deep ones, but um, yeah, I'm not catching anything with the fingernail at all now, so it's pretty good uh, compared to what we were starting with, you know? So that's pretty much gonna do it. I'm not gonna bore you guys with the rest of the journals. Um, obviously on the rod journals, you're gonna be going a little bit thicker on the sandpaper and your uh, microfiber cloth here. But that's pretty much how you do it. Um, I just want to say one thing, and that's that when you put this thing back together, uh, you're gonna really want to make sure you get all these galley ways cleared out. Um, they're gonna have polish and sand and a little bit of metal in there too. So you're really gonna want to make sure you spray this whole thing down with brake clean in every single passageway, and then you're gonna blow it out with air. And you're really just gonna want to make sure you do that over and over and over again so you don't have anything left over. Um, it's also very important you guys check in your bearing clearances when you put this thing back together because you may have taken up a little bit of material, but the chances are probably pretty slim on that. But still, if you guys want to learn how to check your main bearing clearances and your rod bearing clearances and stuff, uh, just keep your head on a swivel for whenever this video comes out, the Redneck Racing Motor. I'm hoping to have this thing here back together pretty soon um, and post it out there so you guys can see. Uh, this is pretty much going to do it here for the Redneck Crankshaft Polishing video. I um, hope you guys enjoyed yourself and I hope you learned something. Uh, I want you guys to remember one thing and one thing only here. Here at Trezzy Racing, if it's scored, if it's twisted, if it's bent, it doesn't necessarily mean it's broken.